lovely students how are you all a very hearty welcome to this mind blowing platform physics wala my name is upur sharma and today we are going to do a chapter called bholi now if we look at the title bholi what does it translate into bholi basically means an innocent girl okay a girl which is innocent a girl which is very gullible she is called bholi in this chapter basically we are going to meet with a girl whose name was bholi whose name was actually something different her parents named her sulekha but she was eventually called bholi but you know bholi sheds her bhola pan one day you know she sheds her innocence one day and she becomes a very strong woman how does she, does this happen and Uh, you know we know that education is a very great tool education is a great tool and education is what helps bholi transform from a bholi bhali girl to a very strong woman that is what we are going to read in this chapter so now let's start see we'll have an overview line by line explanation word meaning and important key points we are going to discuss okay now let's do it now the chapter bholi is written by k a abbas so k a abbas was a writer of this chapter it is about the impact of family on children see when we talk about children when we talk about the upbringing of children what is the most important thing the most important thing for the upbringing of children is the love of parents you know the love of parents it's the greatest thing when a what a ch child can have you know if you go to any pediatrician if you go to any person a person who is a child expert they'll tell you that parents constant support is needed for the children not only their physical support their mental support you know everything is needed in order to you know uh actually grow up a child in order to you know bring up a child so this is the thing the impact of family is very important in order to you know take care of a child bholi is a little girl who fails to develop self confidence now we are talking about a girl who fails to develop self confidence she has no self confidence okay why because of her parents attitude towards her you know parents attitude parents positive attitude is very much important you know the attitude it can have a lot of effect on a person the story hints hints at why family support and emotional security family support and emotional security are essential for prop, prop, proper child development when we talk about child development you know parents help you you know uh, they help you financially you know they help you in a lot of other ways but emotional support emotional support is also very important you know those children are very lucky you should also consider yourself lucky if you are getting your parents support if you are getting physical support from them if you are getting getting you know um monetary support from them and if you are also getting emotional support from them then your childhood is perfect but what happens with bholi that we are going to see that what really happens with her why doesn't uh, doesn't she get her family's support now her name was sulekha but since her childhood everybody everyone had been calling her bholi the simpleton okay the simpleton the simpleton is a person who is foolish foolish okay foolish person basically a very innocent person is called a simpleton who can easily be tricked by other people you know other people can make a fool of them very easily so that is why they are called simpleton but her name was sulekha her sulekha but since her childhood they were calling her uh, you know bholi She was a fourth daughter of Nambardar Ramlal. She was a fourth daughter. Okay, Nambardar Ramlal. He had a lot of children, and she was the fourth daughter. Nambardar means an official who collects revenue. So basically, if we see here, his father, her father was very rich. Her father was kind of a zamedar of the uh, village, and he used to collect uh, the you know revenue. he was the government official he was also a government official he was the face of the village so she was a fourth daughter when she was 10 months old she had fallen off the cot on her head and perhaps it had damaged some part of her brain so sometimes what happens is that that the children fall it's very natural for the children to fall off you know of the cot or anything else but sometimes you know it hits the wrong part okay it hits the wrong part and it can develop a mental condition so it had damaged some part of her brain that's why she remained a backward child backward child means not a normal child okay not a normal child she was a backward child she took time to learn the things okay that is why she was called a backward child and came to be known as bholi the simpleton 
सो द रीजन बिहाइंड द रीजन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट वाई भोली वॉज कॉल्ड भोली वाई सुलेखा बिकेम भोली इट्स अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन सो दैट यू कैन सी हियर दैट शी वॉज कॉल्ड भोली बिकॉज इट द अ पार्ट ऑफ अर ब्रेन वॉज डैमेज वेन शी फेल ऑफ अ कॉट नाउ at birth the child was very fair and pretty now they are talking about the physical appearance of bholi so bholi was very fair and pretty but she when she was 2 years old she had an attack of smallpox you know what smallpox smallpox leaves a lot of pock marks on your body so on the eyes were only the eyes were saved but the entire body was permanently disfigured by deep black pock marks the pock marks are basically like acne marks you know similar to acne marks okay you know a lot of people you know they have smallpox they have an attack of smallpox but only a few people for a few people it's so much dangerous the effect is so much high that the pock marks are permanent the pock marks become permanent because when you are suffering from smallpox after smallpox you have to take care of your skin a lot you have to you know apply uh, medicines and everything you know in order to you know uh, uh, you know remove those pock marks but that was not done with bholi and there were permanent pock marks on her body little sulekha could not speak until she was 5 when she was 5 she could not speak and when at last she learned to speak she stammered okay it took her 5 years to learn otherwise the children learn at the age of 1 or 2 you know children generally start speaking uh, you know uh, you know a few words at the age of 1 and then eventually they start uh, speaking properly by 2 or 2.5 years they start speaking but she couldn't learn you know she couldn't speak until she was 5 and when she spoke she, she finally learned to speak she stuttered okay she stammered she could not you know speak the words properly the other children often made fun of her and mimicked her as a result she talked very little now when this happened you know children what do the other children do the other children are very good at making fun of you they she they used to mimic her they used to copy her whatever she used to speak they used to copy her and that is why obviously all these things let uh, you know all these things you know they uh, let her uh, you know uh, confidence sink down you know your confidence you cannot be confident enough when the other people are making fun of you they are copying you as a result she talked very you know she talked very less she didn't speak because she knew that if she will speak other people will make fun of her ramlal had seven children three sons and four daughters and the youngest of them was boli so the boli boli was the youngest you know she, she was the smallest of the children it was a prosperous fam farmer's household and there was plenty of uh, plenty to eat and drink so they are talking about the financial condition the financial condition of his father of a father was very well they were prosperous they were very rich okay as i told you that he was a number dar and they had plenty to eat and drink if we talk about the earlier times the people were very simple the only thing that they needed was to eat and drink so all these facilities all these you know they had all these facilities they had all these things with them they had plenty to eat and drink so it was a well off family all the children except bholi were healthy and strong all the children were healthy but bholi was not strong because nobody paid attention to her and that is why she was very you know weak the sons had been sent to the city to study in schools and later in colleges of the daughters radha the eldest had already been married you know we are talking about the older times and older times people used to have a lot of children and the gap was also a lot you know uh, the elder children <laughs> the elder sister the elder daughter and the you know youngest daughter they had a lot of they, they had a huge gap so that was common that was very normal uh, in the older times so radha had already been married radha who was the uh, eldest of the sisters she was married and uh, further the second daughter mangla's marriage had also been settled so mangla's marriage had also been settled she was the second daughter and when that was done ramlal would think of third champa at those times you know only the son were sent to school as we could see that there was a huge disparity between children you know but, uh, there was a huge difference there was a gender indifference was there and gender di discrimination was there only the sons were sent to school and the girls they were you know uh, taught uh, the household work and they were just 
you know married off like radha was married mangla's marriage was was fixed and champa was to get married after you know uh, this mangla ramla would think of third champa they were good looking healthy girls and it was not difficult to find bridegrooms for them because they were beautiful they were pretty they were strong they were healthy so it was not difficult to find grooms for them because earlier the grooms had only one demand that the girl should be healthy you know the girl should be healthy it should be she should be beautiful she would should be good looking or she should know the household work but but ramlal was worried about bholi ramlal's ramlal was worried about bholi because the only thing that he had in his mind was that how is he going to get you know bholi married that was his only problem his his other problems you know he didn't have any other problem that how he is going to you know teach her how she is going to get how he was not worried about her education he was not worried about the education of all the girls of none of the girls he was educated he was worried about the education of those he was only you know worried about their marriage so when bholi's time came he was thinking that when bholi's time will come how will i get her married she had neither good looks nor intelligence she had none of the qualities she had none of the qualities bholi was 7 years old when mangla was married now finally mangla was also married the second sister was also married the same, same year a primary school for girls was opened in their village the same year a primary school was opened okay a primary school opened in the village now primary school is first to fifth okay the school of first to fifth primary school you know the class 1 to class 5 is the primary school that the sealdar sahab came to perform its opening ceremony he said to ramdal as a revenue official you are the representative of the government in the village so you must set an example to the villagers now number that now it's the time you know when the sealdar came and he inaugurated the school the school was opened so uh, he approached number dar and he told him that number dar you are the representative of the village you are a government revenue official so everybody is going to look on you you know it's a school for girls so you should send your schools you, you should send your girl to the school you have to set an example okay you have to set a good example because if a government official is sending uh, his daughter to the school then other people would also be you know forced to uh, send forced need means that other uh, people are also inspired they will be inspired to send their girls to the school so you should also do this thing now you must send your daughters to school that night when ramlal consulted his wife she cried are you crazy if girls go to school who will marry them but ramlal had not the courage to disobey the tehsildar when he consulted his wife when he asked his wife okay he asked his wife of her opinion now the wife said that nobody is going to marry the daughters if they are you know educated you know this thing happens you know uh, in the older times people did not get married to the you know educated girls they didn't want to get married to an educated big girls because they thought that if a girl is educated she might have some opinions and the opinions of women did not matter at those times uh, you know women were only expected to do the household works if she was educated she might have opinions she might you know speak she might learn to speak and these were the things that is why they did not want their daughters to get married they did not want to bring the daughter in laws the educated daughter in laws so that is why her wife said that nobody is going to get married to my daughters but here numberdar numberdar was you know forced to send his daughters because he had no courage to say no to the tehsildar tehsildar had told him it was you know necessary for him to obey the tehsildar at last his wife said i will tell you what to do send bholi to school as it is there is little chance of her getting married with ugly face and lack of sense now she got an idea you know it clicked to her that okay you can send bholi to the school because bholi had no chances to get married you know we already don't out have much chances of her to get married because she has an ugly face she has you know lack of sense lack of sense that she doesn't have manners she doesn't have you know she is a simple girl she is a simpleton she doesn't know anything and you should send her to school let the two teachers at school worry about her she also thought that, that okay now the teachers will get worried of her because she'll go to school we'll have you know some space the next day ramlal caught bholi by the hand and said come with me i will take you to school bholi was frightened she did not know what a school was like now next day what happened ramlal you know he listened to his wife he agreed to his wife's statement and he said that okay i'll take bholi to the school and he caught her by her hand and he took her to the school now 
वन थिंग यू नोटिस इज दैट हिज फादर जस्ट टुक डायरेक्टली भोली टू द स्कूल ही डिड नॉट एक्सप्लेन टू भोली दैट वट अ स्कूल वॉज लाइक वट इज अ स्कूल दैट आई एम टेकिंग यू टू योर स्कूल एंड स्कूल इज लाइक दिस स्कूल इज लाइक दैट ही जस्ट टू कर माई हैंड एंड ही जस्ट यू नो ही वॉन्टेड टू टेक अ फोर्सफुली फोर्सफुली टू द स्कूल शी वॉज फ्राइटन फ्राइटन मीन्स दैट शी वॉज वेरी मच स्केयर्ड शी वॉज स्केयर्ड दैन आई डोंट नो दैट वेयर माई फादर इज taking me to she remembered how a few days ago their old cow lakshmi had been turned out of the house and sold no 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 she shouted in terror and pulled her hand away from her father's grip now bholi is a very small girl you know she is a very young girl and she is you know very scared she is very frightened and she is also you know we know that she has lack of sense so she could not understand that where my father is taking me she just remember that one day they took their cow also and they sold their cow she was also thinking in her mind that maybe i'll be also you know they'll uh, sell me or they'll do something like that i'll uh, have the similar fate like you know lakshmi like lakshmi was sold off i will also be sold off or i'll be you know uh, i don't know god knows that where they are sending me she shouted in terror she shouted she was frightened and pulled her hand away from her father's grip her father was holding her what's the matter with you fool shouted ramlal now ramlal shouted on her round ramlal instead of telling her that i'm taking you to a good place he you know chose to shout on her he thought that okay she is a foolish girl she'll not understand anything so he didn't explain anything to her he just caught her by the hand and he just you know she was just taking her he was just taking her forcefully i am only taking you to school then he told his wife let her wear some decent clothes today or else what will be the teachers and the other school girls think of us when they see her new clothes had never been made for bholi the old dresses of her sisters was were passed on to her now as we could see that ramlal didn't explain to the daughter that what a school was he just told her that i'm taking you to school obviously she was such a young girl she never knew she didn't know that what a school was how a school was what was going to happen with her in the school now he told his wife he instructed his wife that you just you know you uh, give her clean clothes to wear you give her some decent clothes you know some decent clothes means some clean and good clothes to wear in the school today because uh, what would the teachers think what would the other people think you know we you know bholi you should remain at home she was never dressed properly so people didn't say anything but now bholi for the first time she was going out of the house and people were going to notice her that is why he told her that you should give her nice clothes to wear you should give her decent clothes to wear now one thing more we came to know that new clothes had never been made for bholi you know new clothes had never been clothes had never been made for her the old dresses of her sisters were passed on to her this similarly the same things happen in the you know middle class families and actually most of the families this happens you know the pe- you, the uh, clothes of the elder children they are passed on to the younger children similarly it was it happened with bholi but you know no one cared to mend or wash her clothes but today she was lucky to receive a clean dress which had shrunk after many washings and no longer fitted champa no one cared to mend or wash her clothes you know even if her clothes were torn nobody actually you know uh, took care of it nobody you know mended it and nobody washed it but today she felt lucky that okay new clothes are given to her today she was given a nice dress she was given a clean dress which had shrunk it had shrunk means it had shrunk from you know constant washings after washing again and again the dresses shrink okay and it was champa's red dress and it no longer fitted champa that is why it was passed on to bholi but sh- it was clean okay it was a very big thing that at least it was clean she was even bathed and oil was rubbed into her dry and matted hair she she was bathed okay earlier to that prior to the uh, to that nobody actually bathed her nobody put oil on her head you know a child needs constant care a girl needs constant care you know the mother should you know oil her hair the mother should comb her hair but nothing happened before that and her the her hair were very much dry and matted matted means entangled the hair were entangled if you do not comb your hair you know somebody is if you do not comb the hair, hair you know properly and the daily they are entangled very badly and the thing it means that bholi's condition was very bad okay nobody took care of her not even her elder sisters nobody actually put put heed to her and she was also always kept like that only then did she begin to believe that she was being taken to a place better than her home 
when they reached the school the children were already in their classrooms ramlal handed over his daughter to the headmistress now after all these things were done after she was taken care of after she was bathed after she her oil were her you know oil was put into her hair she just began to realize that okay i'm going to a good place i'm going to a better place than home that is why you know they are you know taking care of me i'm being taken care of because i am being taken to a better place now when they reach the school the school was already the school had already already started her classmates had already seated themselves and his father you know left her with the headmistress left alone the poor girl looked about her with fear laden eyes there were several rooms and in each rooms like her squatted on mats reading from books or writing on slates the headmistress asked bolly to sit down in a corner in one of the classrooms left alone she was left alone she had never been left alone she had never left her house so it was very difficult situation for her she was very much scared she the poor girl the poor girl here the girl was you know you cannot she is not monetarily poor but her condition was very poor she was you know she started looking everywhere there were a lot of walls there were a lot of rooms her eyes were fear laden you know fear filled laden means fear laden eyes means they were full of terror okay full of terror her eyes were full of terror there were several rooms and in the rooms like her squatted on mats the girls you know room girls were her like her girls were like her means the girls were of her age and they were squatting squatting means you know sitting like that you know when you make a alti palti when you you know cross your legs and you sit it, sit on the floor she had squatted on mats reading from books or writing on scales okay the girls were either reading a book or either they were writing on the slates you know the headmistress the headmistress are uh, also asked bholi that you sit in a corner she you know uh, told her that you should also sit in a corner obviously it was very first time for the bholi for bholi so it was a very difficult situation for bholi we can just imagine bholi did not know what exactly a school was like and what happened there but she was glad to find so many girls almost of her own age present there now bholi did not know what a school was like nobody uh, ever told told her nobody ever discussed it with her with her because we know that she had no friends but she was glad she was very happy that she might find a friend here she was very happy she said that she hoped that one of these girls might become a friend she saw that all these girls are of my age so might i might you know make a friend uh, here the lady teacher who was in the class was saying something to the girls but bholi could understand nothing now as we know that bholi is a simpleton and nobody ever talked to her nobody ever interacted with her so she could she could not understand a word what the teacher was actually teaching but bholi she looked at the pictures on the wall but the good thing was that she was looking at the pictures on the wall as we can see that in primary schools there are a lot of pictures in the classroom so that you know children can get fascinated by the walls and everything and the same thing happened she was fascinated by the walls the colors fascinated her the colors appeared to her the colors attracted her there were a lot of colors so she was happy to see the colors the horse was brown just like the horse on which the tehsildar came okay and uh, had come to visit their village the goat was black like the goat of their neighbor okay she just remembered her neighbor's goat parrot was green like parrot she had seen in the mango uh, in the mango orchard when she went to the mango orchard there were parrots there and the parrot was just similar to that parrot and the cow was just like lakshmi so after watching all these pictures on the wall she could relate it with you know the real life she could relate these pictures with real life and suddenly bholi noticed that the teacher was standing by her side smiling at her suddenly bholi noticed that the teacher was there and the teacher was talking to her the teacher started asking her name she asked her name that what's your name but bholi could not speak her name bholi started stuttering bholi started stammering she said ba 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 she stammered she stuttered then she began to cry and tears flowed from her eyes in a helpless flood we know that bholi was a very timid girl she was just a very simple girl she nobody ever talked to her when the teacher asked her she was feared okay she was frightened and she could not speak her name that is why you know tears started you know falling down her eyes she kept her head down as she sat in her corner 
her head was down she was ashamed okay and she could not dare to look up at the girls look up at the girls the girls were laughing at her you know the children the children are very innocent the children do not know that how they have to support the other children so the children were laughing at her when she could not speak properly the children started laughing and she you know she held her uh, head in uh, she uh, you know she could not you know pick up her head again when the school bell rang all the girls scurried out of the classroom now the school bell ra- uh, school bell rang and all the girls scurried out of the room scurried means they ran hurriedly you know when tan tan happens when the school is over the children they run out of their classrooms like the people like the prisoners from a jail so the same thing happened but bholi dared not leave her corner Bholi did not have that courage. She did not have that guts to leave her place. She was so much scared. She was so much ashamed. Her head still lowered. She kept on sobbing. She kept on sobbing. She kept on crying. Okay, she kept on crying. Now sobbing is when you cry like. <laughs> so she was crying like that. Okay, she was just crying. The teacher's voice was so soft and soothing. In all her life, she had never been called like that. Now. the teacher came to her again and the teacher's voice was very smooth you know the teachers have a very smooth voice she had a very smooth soothing voice she was there to comfort bholi and she told her to get up get up said the teacher and it was not a command she did not command get up she did not say it like that instead it was just a you know polite suggestion she told her get up get up bholi got up when she told her get up she told it very calmly she told it in a very sweet manner and as we already know that nobody talked to her in that way that gave her actually the confidence now tell me your name the teacher tell, told her now tell me your name she asked her name sweat broke out over her over her whole body would her stammering tongue again disgrace her now she was thinking in her mind that okay you know i cannot speak and will my stammering tongue she knew that she had a stammering tongue she used to stutter so she could not speak properly that is why she was thinking that will my tongue disgrace me again disgrace me it will ashame me again i will i will it ashame me okay will it shame me again for the sake of this kind woman but for the sake of this kind woman no now the teacher was so kind she thought that this teacher is so kind she decided that i am going to make an effort i am going to try okay i am going to try because she is such a sweet lady she has such a sweet voice she is not going to scold me she is not going to make fun of me that is why she started you know trying again she said bha bha bho bha 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 bho and then well done the teacher told her well done well done the teacher encouraged her and she said come on now the whole name tell me the full name tell me the full name so we could see we can see here that the teacher was such a nice lady the teacher knew that how to tackle such children the teachers are taught to you know uh, deal with such kind of children that you have to deal with them with patience and love you know even when we do the teacher course when we do the child development course and everything we are being told that you have to you know tackle every children differently every children has different needs you know the children like bholi who are very scared who start crying just by the idea of saying their name who are very much you know ashamed of themselves who are just you know so much embarrassed you have to talk to them very sweetly okay you have to use a sweet and soothing voice with them that is why the teacher did the same and the, then she finally said bha bha bhole her efforts were you know not in vain at last she was able to say it and felt relieved she was relieved after saying her name she felt as if she has done a great achievement as if she had achieved a lot of thing you know she had achieved a great success well done the teacher patted her affectionately and said put the fear out of your heart and you will be able to speak like everyone else well done the teacher patted her affectionately you know affectionately patted her means patted her means when you touch you know when you do like this okay you know she did it with very with love and she said that you if you put the fear out like the teacher actually tells you know that you have to put your fear out just you know do not get feared and you will be able to speak like everyone bholi just looked at uh, looked up at her you know bholi looked at up her and it was appearing that as if she was trying to say really really because she had a hope in her heart she had a hope in her heart that the teacher whatever teacher is saying 
it is it is right and she would be able to speak like other people because it was we can we can know we know here that bholi's dream was to speak like everybody else and after the teacher told her that you would be do you uh, will be able to do that she got very happy she was relieved yes yes it will be very easy you come to school every day will you come now she asked her that you have to come to school every day in order to do this bholi nodded bholi nodded bholi you know she moved her head okay nodded no say it aloud and she said yeah yeah yes bholi was herself astonished you know when she said yes okay when she said yes she was surprised that i was able to say it she could not believe herself that i said two words today first i said my name and then i said yes without stammering didn't i tell you now take this book didn't i tell you now take this book the book was full of nice pictures and the pictures were in color cat dog goat horse parrot tiger and a cow just like lakshmi and with every picture was a word in big black letters now her teacher gave her an alphabet book you know in alphabet book basically big letters are written a is written and then a, a you know a picture is there or a a e e is written whatever she gave her an alphabet book and she was very happy to see it because it had very very big images in one month you will be able to read this book now her teacher promised her something now her teacher you know she told her that in one month you will be able to learn then i will give you a big, bigger book then still bigger one in time you will be more learned than anyone else in the village she you know promised her that in time you know with time you will be the most learned girl you will be the most educated girl in the school you know here we can see that she is boosting up her confidence the teacher is so lovely such a lovely you know lady that she is boosting up her confidence she is giving her confidence she is giving her wings she said that no one will be able will ever be able to laugh at you people will listen to you with respect and you will be able to understand without the slightest stammer without even a little a little stammer you know when you will learn when you will learn to speak when you will be educated you will just speak like everybody else nobody will make fun of you everybody is going to listen to you yes everybody will listen to you understand now go home and come back early tomorrow morning this is how her teacher you know handled her it was a very beautiful way of handling a uh, you know timid girl so it was just these words actually did a wonder on bholi this is what bholi wanted you know this is what bholi wanted bholi needed support and her teacher gave her so bholi felt as if suddenly all the bells in the village temple were ringing and the trees in front of the school house had blossomed into big red flowers her heart was throbbing with a new hope and a new life now what was bholi's reaction why it is written why they have written that the bells of the temple were ringing that the flowers were blooming and everything was great her heart was throbbing it was as if she had found a new love this happens this usually happens this is very you know a dramatic way of explaining when person meets uh, you know meets someone they love these things happen you know these thing happens and today she had found a new hope she had found a new life in the form of her teacher her teacher was such a lovely person that she found everything she was ever looking for she found that love she found that support in the form of her teacher so she was very happy today thus the years passed now the years passed the village became a small town the little primary school became a high school there were now a cinema under a tin shed and a cotton getting mill the mail train began to stop at the railway station one night after dinner ramlal said to his wife then shall i accept bishambar's proposal now the village became a small town these were the changes that happened after a lot of years passed the village became a small town there was a cotton mill there was a cinema and the train also began to stop here so there were a lot of changes a lot of things happened a lot of things happened in the village and one day one at dinner uh time ramlal asked his wife that shall i accept bishambar's proposal here proposal means a marriage proposal he is basically talking about a marriage proposal he is basically talking about an alliance okay and he is asking his wife yes certainly the wife said yes surely why not okay yes surely why not 
the wife said bhole will be lucky to get such a well to do grime uh, bridegroom she would be happy she'll be very happy to get such a well to do here well to do means a very rich groom she is happy to have such a she'll be happy to have such a husband such a rich husband so here we know that they are talking about bholi they are talking about bholi's marriage a big shop a house of his own and i hear several thousands in the bank moreover he is not asking for any dowry that's right but he is not so young you know almost the same age as i am and he also limps moreover the children from his first wife are quite grown up so what does it matter his wife replied now bishambar uh, i mean uh, his father ramlal ramlal is telling that what kind of a person is bishambar he is explaining you know he uh, the wife said the wife said wife said that he he, he has a big house of his own and he has several thousands in the bank he has a big shop he is a big shop owner moreover he is not asking for the dowry it's a very important thing that he is not asking for dowry that's right now the husband said you know they are having a conversation you know bholi's mother bholi's mother is telling that how you know uh, bishambar is a good option for bholi because he has a lot of money he is well to do whereas bholi's father is telling that okay these things are okay but he he is of you know he is very old he is very old he is just similar of my age it means that the groom that they had found for bholi was of the same age as of ramlal and he said that moreover he also limps limps means he has a problem in his you know um, leg he is not able to proper walk properly moreover the children he also told that he was already married and he also has you know quite grown up children he has quite grown up children so what does it matter now his wife asked, so what does it matter you know wife said i mean the mother of bholi mother of bholi said so what does it matter his wife replied 45 or 50 it is no great age for men you know this is the thinking they are talking about the thinking of the older times they are saying that men are never old enough to get married okay men should never look at their age they are perfect for getting married and he said and she also added that we are lucky that he is from another village and does not know about her pock marks and her lack of sense if we don't accept this proposal she may remain unmarried all her life she was telling all the plus points she was telling that he is rich okay and no matter whatever his age is age he is 45 or 50 it's not a great age for men and the other thing is that he is from another village he doesn't know that bholi has so many you know problems she has so many disabilities she has pock marks and she is not beautiful she neither has any intelligence she has lack of sense or anything so we are very lucky you know she might remain unmarried because she is not going to get such a good proposal it's a very good proposal then he said what will that witless one day acha yes but i wonder what bholi will say what will that witless one say she is like a dumb cow maybe you are right muttered ramlal now ramlal is still you know he is worrying that what will bholi say because he is worrying that my maybe bholi will tell you know bholi will say no to this proposal she will reject this proposal because of his age or because of his first marriage and his children and everything but now the wife said now the mother of bholi mother of bholi says that it's okay it's okay nobody is going to ask her she is just a dumb cow she is just a witless person witless person means that she is of no brain she is just a foolish person who's asking her you know girls you know they their opinion didn't matter okay her opinion was not asked in the other corner of the courtyard bholi lay awake on her cot listening to her parents whispered conversation now while her parents were whispering while they were talking to each other while the mother was telling all the advantages and father was you know worrying over the disadvantages bholi was listening everything bholi was listening to their conversation she actually knew that what her parents were talking about bishambar nath was a very well to do grocer he came with a big party of friends a relation with time with him for the wedding a brass band playing a popular tune from an indian film headed to the procession with the bridegroom riding a decorated horse now the day of the marriage came bishambar nath had come with a very good procession with a good procession procession means a barat he came with a very good barat he had a brass band playing the tune of a popular you know hindi film like it usually happens okay the brass band band also 
also came and there was band baja barat and everything was uh, there okay they were very he was very rich he was a well to do grocer grocer means na you know the daily essentials the person who deals with daily essentials and he came on a decorated horse the horse was very much decorated ram lal was overjoyed to see such pomp and splendor he was happy to see such pomp and splendor splendor means you know uh, the money that was spent okay the money that was spent on the beauty of this barat it was such a nice barat a lot of money was spent there and he was overjoyed he was very happy he had never dreamt that his fourth daughter would have such a grand wedding he had never imagined as we know as we know that earlier also we have read that ram lal was very much worried about bholi that bholi will never get married who will get married to bholi and when a grand wedding you know when he saw that it's such a grand wedding he was very happy he could not believe himself bholi's elder sister who had come for the occasion were envious of her luck now we could see that her sisters were also jealous of her you know neither of them were thinking nobody was thinking that the bridegroom is you know he is of such a big age or he is already married he has a lot of children or anything this actually tells her what is the condition in the older times what was the condition in older times her elder sisters were getting envious of her they were getting jealous of her that he is such a rich person how is she getting married to such a rich person they were comparing the richness they were not comparing that the groom is not suitable for their sister when the auspicious moment came the priest said bring the bride bholi clad in a red silken bridal dress was led to the bride's place near the sacred fire garland the bride one of his friends prompted bishambed nath now it was the varmala time you know in indian weddings there is a varmala ceremony wherein you have to put a garland uh, the groom puts uh, the garland at bride's you know uh, neck and the bride also does the same with the groom so this was the thing and the ceremony was about to happen this was a very auspicious moment and the bride was brought bride means you know bholi she was wearing a red red silken dress she came there and you know bishambhu's friend prompted him chalo chalo you know bride the garland you know sorry garland the bride the bridegroom lifted the garland of yellow marigolds a woman slipped back the silken veil from the bride's face bishamba took a quick glance the garland remained poised in his hands the bride slowly pulled down the veil over her face you know uh, here we knew this thing we com- we came to know that bishamba knew nothing about bholi he knew nothing about bholi he never knew that she such she has such an ugly face she has pock marks on her face so the moment of truth comes when he lifted you know he lifted the garland he was about to put the garland uh, in bholi's neck and a woman actually a woman you know women are like that only women you know they she put, p- p- uh, you know she picked up a veil from bride's face so that bishambha nath can have a quick quick glance you know bishambha nath thought that i should look at my bride too he was just trying to look at her bride and when he saw her the garland was poised in her in his hands it was poised meant it remained in his hands okay it was poised it was fixed in his hand why because he was so much surprised after you know looking at his bride he was surprised and then bholi you know she pulled down the veil again have you seen her said bishamba to the friend next to him she has pock marks on her face so what you are not young either now he said to friend have you seen her have you seen her she has pock marks on her face and the friend is also saying so what you are also young you know you are also not very young so what happened okay if she has pock marks on her face but maybe but if i am to marry her her father must give me 5000 rupees now as we knew that bishambha nath was not asking for any dowry but here he said that if i have to marry her if i have to marry her you have to give me 5000 rupees she was asking for 5000 rupees 5000 rupees actually accounts for 5 lakh rupees you know if we talk about ramlal went and placed his turban his honor at bishambha's feet do not humiliate me so take 2000 rupees now he was humiliated and it was just a filmy scene where he just picked up his turban and he put his turban the father of the bride it means bholi's father ramlal he placed his turban at bishambha nath's feet and he requested her uh, and he requested him that please do not humiliate me please do not insult me okay everybody is looking at me and you know please take 2000 rupees 
He said, no, 5,000 rupees or we go back, keep your daughter. Be a little considerate, please. If you go back, I can never show my face in the village. Then out with 5,000. Now be a little considerate. He was saying that, please consider my situation. Please, you know, think about it. Please take 2,000 rupees. Do not ask for 5,000 rupees because 5,000 rupees is a very big amount. And he was asking it on the spot. On the spot, he was saying just out with 5,000 rupees. Just give me 5,000 rupees right now. Otherwise, I will leave the bride Okay, I will read, uh, I will leave the bride at the altar. You know, this thing happens, you know, this we are talking about older times, we are talking about a village scenario where if the girl is not, uh, you know, married at her altar, if she is left at the altar, then the father cannot show his face anywhere. So it's not only a filmy scene, but it's also the reality. These things actually used to happen and he actually plays his turban at his, you know, son-in-law's feet supposed son-in-law's feet. Tears screaming down his face, Ramlal went in and opened the safe and counted out the notes. He placed the bundle at the bridegroom's feet. On Bishamba's greedy face appeared a triumphant smile. He had gambled and won. Give me the garland, he announced. Now, obviously, Ramlal, Ramlal started crying. Ramlal started crying. Ramlal had never imagined in his life that he would have to do that. He was very happy that I do not have to give dowry, but he still he had to go to the, uh, you know, safe. He went to the safe and he counted the notes and he just gave Bishambar Nath the notes. He gave Bishambar Nath the, um, uh, the, okay, he placed the, you know, notes at, you know, Bishambar Nath's feet. You know, he was, it was just a very sad moment. On Bishamba's greedy face appears a triumphant smile. It now, Bishamba, he gave a triumphant smile. He gave a victory smile. He thought that, okay, I have gambled and I have won. You know, it was just a gamble. He had just said it. You know, he just, you know, gambled. He just said that, okay, if I'll say this thing, you know, I have to get married to an ugly girl. So if I'll ask 5,000 rupees, maybe I'll get 5,000 rupees. He had thought so and it, he succeeded. He got 5,000 rupees and now he was ready to garland the bride. Once again, the veil was slipped back from the bride's faith. But now what happened? Now, Boli. Boli removed her veil again. You know, she removed her veil again. But this time, her eyes were not down cows. She was not looking down. She was not looking down. She was looking up straight at her prospective husband. At her prospective husband. At her to-be husband. She looked at her to-be husband. In her eyes was neither anger. She did not look at him with anger or hate, just cold contempt. She was looking at him coldly. Okay, she was looking at him coldly. And Bishamba raised the garland to place it round the bride's neck. But before he could do so, Bholi's hand struck out like a streak of lightning and the garland was flung into the fire. She got up and threw away the veil. Bishamba raised the garland. Now Bishamba was ready to garland her again. But she did not allow it to do him. Uh, it, she did not allow him to do that. And she, you know, flung it like that. She flung it like that and the garland fell into the, you know, sacred fire. Now, this is also a very filmy scene. She did not, she just, her hand struck like lightning. She did it like this and the garland fell and he was not able to garland the bride. She got up and threw away the veil. Pitashi said Bholi in a clear loud voice. Now Pitashi, she said Pitashi with a clear voice. She did not stammer at all. And Everybody, her mother, sister, brothers, relations and neighbors, everybody started looking at her. Everybody, they were surprised. They were, you know, astonished that Bholi, Bholi is speaking without stammering. She could speak without the slightest of stammer as her teacher had predicted. The same thing happened. Her teacher had already predicted that Bholi would do something like that. Pitaji, take back your money. I am not going to marry this man. She declared it. She spoke this even, not even with the slightest of stammer. She told her father that I am not going to get married to this person. Ramlal was thunderstruck. Ramlal was thunderstruck. Thunderstruck means he was very shocked. He was very shocked. He was start. He was just startled. The guests began to whisper, so shameless, so ugly and shameless. Obviously, the guests are like that, so shameless. She's such a shameless girl. The girls are not supposed to speak. The brides are not supposed to speak. Why is she speaking? Bholi, are you crazy? Shouted Ramlal. You want to disgrace your family. Have some regard for our Izzat. For our Izzat. Izzat means respect. He 
started telling her that you should shut up you should not speak anything you must consider about your respect just think about your respect just think about her izzat what are you doing why are you you know speaking like this the brides are not supposed to talk like that for the sake of your izzat said bholi i was willing to marry this lame old man i was you know she said that sir father for the sake of your izzat i was you know marrying this man i will not have such a mean greedy and contemptible coward as my husband i won't i won't i won't then she declared that i won't have such a husband you know he's such a greedy she is he's such a lame person i will not get get married to such a person he's such a person she was actually quite angered that he was asking for dowry and that too at uh, you know on the spot what a shameless girl we all thought she was a harmless dumb cow now a woman said a woman from the village said that what a shameless girl we all thought that she was very innocent she was just like a dumb cow bholi turned violently now bholi was very angry and she turned at the lady and she said yes aunty you are right you all thought that i was a dumb driven cow that's why you wanted me handed me over to this heartless creature you okay you all thought that i'm a dumb cow you all thought that i'm very innocent i am a very gullible girl that is why you were giving me to this heartless creature this heartless creature the, he is such old he has children and he is everything and he is such heartless and you are giving me to this animal but now the dumb coy cow the stammering fool is speaking do you want to hear more but i am now speaking do you want to hear more it means that she was she got angry on the women she got angry on that lady who was actually trying to suppress her voice because as i told you that women were not supposed to speak the women were not speak supposed to speak their heart out bishambar nad the grocer started to go back with his party the confused bandsmen thought that this was the end of the ceremony and struck up a closing song ramlal stood rooted to the ground his head bowed low with the weight of grief and shame bishambarnath bishambarnath obviously after listening so much he just left with his barat he just left with the procession and here we could see that the band was very much confused band was thinking that what should we do and they started playing the conclusion tune uh, maybe the vidai tune they started playing that and you know this thing these things were happening whereas on the other hand ramlal his head was down ramlal was thinking that what has happened you know uh, the barat has left and you know i might not be able to show my face in the village and you know this is going to happen this is not good for our izzat what is going to happen this this is usually these are usually the thoughts of a you know father the flames of the sacred fire slowly died down everybody was go gone you know now everything you know was finished the flames were also you know they were also extinguished they were slowly dying out and everybody had left ramlal turned to bholi and said but what about you you know what about you who will marry to you what shall i do with you shall i keep you you know for the whole life will you be a burden on my shoulders you know this is what parents usually say they said that he was actually trying to tell her that will you be a burden on my shoulders whole life sulekha so said in a voice that was calm and steady now sulekha so replied sulekha so said that sir father do not worry pitaji in your old age i am going to serve you and mother i'm not going to get married i will serve you and mother i will teach in the same school where i learned so much isn't that right ma'am now comes a point of surprise her teacher was standing there the teacher had all along all through this drama whatever happened here her teacher was sitting there her uh, sorry standing there she was listening each and everything she said yes of course bholi she replied and in her smiling eyes was the light of a deep satisfaction and in her smiling eyes the light of a deep satisfaction that an artist feels when contemplating the completion of her masterpiece here it's a beautiful line it's a beautiful line you know the teacher the teacher we know that everything everything that bholi had done you know whatever bholi had said bholi had so much confidence whatever whatever she got she got from her teacher her teacher was an artist and bholi was her masterpiece you know she had given shape to bholi she had made bholi into this masterpiece who was able to speak without even slightest of slammer slammer she had predicted her teacher had predicted that you know Uh, no sooner you will be able to speak and everybody is going to listen to you nobody is going to make fun of you and the same thing happened at the wedding nobody made fun of her everybody was surprised that she is speaking you know without even slightest of the slammer and everybody was listening to her and she was just feeling like an artist who has contemplate who was contemplating at her uh, masterpiece contemplating means looking 
क्यों नहीं यू नो शी वॉज लुकिंग शी वॉज लुकिंग डीपली शी वॉज लुकिंग डीपली एट हर मास्टर पीस भोली वॉज अ मास्टर पीस एंड शी वॉज फीलिंग वेरी हैप्पी शी हर आईज वर स्माइलिंग एवरी थिंग शी वॉज जस्ट फीलिंग दैट ओके आई हैव अचीव इट आई हैव अचीव इट आई हैव ट्रांसफॉर्म दिस भोली भाली गर्ल इन टू अ स्ट्रॉन्ग वुमेन दैट इज वॉट भोली वॉन्टेड दैट इज वर टीचर वॉन्टेड सो इट वॉज जस्ट अ विन विन सिचुएशन फॉर ऑल इट वॉज जस्ट अ वेरी गुड एंडिंग वी कैन सी now let's look at the word meanings i have just uh, you know written a few word meanings which are very important see numberdar who is a numberdar numberdar is a revenue official as we know pock marks are the scars caused by acne or smallpox when smallpox hap uh, smallpox happens or when acne happens so there are smallpox they are like marks on the faces on the face stammer means to stutter frightened means afraid or scared okay stammer you know bholi used to stammer but she started stammering in the end frightened frightened afraid or scared i was frightened to see the lizard you know uh, okay shrink shrink means shrunk get smaller the dress shrunk after a lot of washings squatted squatted means crouched squatted means sitting like that she was squatting on the floor you guess she was squatting on the floor fascinated fascinated strongly attracted she was fascinated by the pictures on the walls disgrace means dishonor now she did not let her parents you know, she is um, you know bholi bholi did not disgrace her parents she saved her parents izzat affectionately means showing love astonished means to get surprised triumphant means victorious okay contemptible contemptible means hateful this word was used for bishambar na that he is a very contemptible person he is a very hateful person he is uh, scared by my pock pock marks so he is a very lame person he is just you know contemptible he is not suitable to be my husband and then in the end contemplating contemplating means thinking deeply she was thinking deeply she was just looking at bholi her teacher was looking at bholi that she is a masterpiece and she is an artist now important key points a girl named sulekha called bholi the youngest daughter of lamlal a numberdar okay so we had, uh, we met with a girl whose name was bhule uh, sulekha but she was called bholi an accident made her backward child she had pock marks at the age of 2 she spoke at the age of 5 but she still stammered parents did not care for her parents never took care of her primary school opened in her school when she was 7 when she was 7 uh, a primary school opened in her school as people didn't want to get married to an educated girl she was sent to school because it was already difficult for her to get married because of her ugliness because of her ugly face and because of her lack of sense so her mother decided that she should be sent to school because already there are less chances of her there are fewer fewer chances of her to get married met with a kind hearted lady teacher who encouraged her to how to speak in the primary school she was lucky to go to the primary school because there she met a very kind lady she hoped for a good life years passed village became a small town bishambar nath a rich grocer was ready to marry bholi now a proposal was sent for bholi of a rich person but he was you know he was very old he was just similar to his father's age her father's age marriage ceremony uh, started with great pomp and show bishambar saw the pock marks on her face he demanded 5000 rupees but ramlal agreed but bholi refused to marry first time she spoke without stammering and everyone was astonished people whispered but bholi answered them very smartly she answered very smartly to the people and everybody you know left the ceremony ramlal was tense but bholi asked him not to get worried and said i will teach in the same school and i will serve you both in your old age so it was a very good ending and bholi finally succeeded bholi finally became a woman whom you know everybody listens to and nobody made fun of her Okay so this is where the chapter ends i hope that you understood the chapter very well thank you so much for this video we'll meet in the next class till then take care bye bye